Hi everybody, this is Martin uh, from Audemars Berlin and um, the following 20 minutes um, it's um, about the usage of Telco APIs in the TED Summit 2020 Asia uh, session and I'm honored and glad to give that presentation and I would like to give you some insights on our experience with implementing communication scenarios based on Telco APIs. So, just a second. Um, since Alan has a tradition in the TED Summit not to like buzzwords and too many logos, I would like to start with a <laughs> no logo player slide. So, just for this presentation, I would like to introduce some terms. Uh, which are hopefully not too buzzwordy. Um, the overall picture, as you see it here, actually consists of classical communication service providers, carriers, and CPaaS providers. Um, I'll go into more details later on. I just want to you know, start with the terms um, and the consuming parties. So it's the clients that uh, actually implement and use communication scenarios, whatever kind of scenarios. And the telco providers, of course, are actually uh, a long established bunch of companies. And in our picture, actually, they sit on the most valuable uh, resource, which is access to networks. Uh, this is what we call raw material. The raw material sim simply is actually zip trunks, number trunks, and uh, SMS trunks. And actually, they provide them in a very classical way. And as I guess everyone knows, there is a, a new way of providing these communication assets and that's via CPaaS, Communication Platform as a Service. And uh, what they do or provide is just on top of the raw material, APIs and SDKs and value-added services, uh, which I will actually explain a little in more detail uh, in the following minutes. And that's what we call here the gold plating of the raw material and the, even the fairy dust on top of the gold plates. And basically the consuming party is everyone who would like to use programmable telco communication assets to provide services. So just a short uh, marketing slide in the last years. We dealt with a lot of those providers, like uh, with carriers and CPaaS providers, and we've implemented uh, a lot of different scenarios using those. Basically, some more details. The uh, telecommunication providers with the raw material, the zip trunks, and the other things is basically wireline and wireless uh, telco infrastructure providers. And their main offerings usually are voice, SMS, and data. And usually they are actually bound to their footprint, which is sometimes just a country. And with the bigger players, uh, more than a country, but they're bound to the footprint. They don't really sell anything outside of the footprint. And uh, basically based on the regulations on their footprint, they of course play with the rules of the uh, governmental bodies uh, in the telecommunications domain. Then we have the CPaaS uh, providers. Uh, here, what we call the challengers with the gold plating, what they do based on the raw material. They provide APIs and SDKs. So little helpers that actually provide a programmable access to the raw material and um, what they offer they usually offer as a pay-as-you-go provision model so you don't pay like a uh, like, like a like a contract based uh, uh, amount but you pay as you go right and uh, most of the time and most of the players, they provide here uh, voice messaging and numbers, some videos and some other things, but that's basically the, the CPAS basically 
offers uh, APIs on top of raw material. Then there are some advanced CPAS offerings that it makes it much easier for developers to be fast by providing uh, whatever kind of service. So they have predefined services already, like two-factor authentication and others. Uh, they even have modeling environments where you could actually predefine what you need, the flows you need, uh, and other things. And uh, what they, what actually differentiates the offering is as well the footprint they do this on. So most of the let's say basic CPaaS providers, they offer their services on uh, footprint too. Uh, and here, like if we take the leaders like uh, Twilio, for instance, then they almost reach a global scale. That means that they provide uh, everything that the basic CPS providers provide. And on top of um, trunks from more than 100 network operators, right? So they really, there are few uh csps that provide the same footprint as for instance twilio is able to provide but they do this by partnering with different providers of course and um, that differentiates them from the the basic providers that are usually at least bound to like a continent or uh, other footprints yes that's uh, basically maybe the what is on the picture um, you can't really say what is better, you know, the, 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 the telco providers or the CPAS providers, they, they have different benefits from what they offer and uh, pain points for the consuming party. So um, if we start here with uh, the benefits and pain points from the telco perspective, then of course the carriers, they provide, usually they provide on their footprint high quality of service, they can deliver high volume and they're usually very robust and reliable network providers. Um, the problem for programmable consuming parties is that they do not expose uh, their the raw material in a way that a lot of people could actually consume it. Um, they don't even have the expertise, like they don't really know what, let's say, bad developers would need and expect. And, um, and they have to face the complexity of the existing IT system landscape. They have to provide their services. And um, even if you actually are a very experienced developer, you need to be experienced with zip stack. And uh, there are not too many developers out there. So for the, let's say, uh, normal software development community, um, the carriers are not really prepared to provide uh, programmable communication assets in a way that they could easily use them and um, develop and provide a communication service. So the CPAS, uh, the basic CPAS uh, providers, um, they offer APIs and SDKs. It's out of the box standard uh, technology that most of web developers and app developers are able to consume. Um, there are actually developer focus, and um, they basically most of them offer uh, what it takes to implement communication scenarios with voice, SMS, messaging, etc. And as I, as I mentioned already, they actually provide it as, with pay as you go, uh, which is for at, at least the guys who want to start small the preferable um, models of Randy. The pain points here is, is that there are a lot of uh, providers. Uh, so if you're a company that wants to use CPaaS, you are uh, in a pretty ugly situation because the market is changing fast and you have to make a decision what is your best provider and then go with that provider. And of course, there is a, a lock-in situation here. Um, the uh, more, let's say, the leaders of the CPES, they um, have a, the benefits are that they actually really not just focus on developers as, as uh, all the, the rest of the CPES providers, they already are a step further in the, uh, in the evolution of CPES that they provide their features or their capabilities in a way that the developers are really fast in setting up things. 
and they can set up things in a way that they're really user friendly for their customers. So they're they really support developers being fast and user friendly. They provide the most innovative new stuff, right? Uh, so for some of the consuming parties, this is important, and they have a one stop shop for everything you could think of. They even invent the things you might not even as a consuming party have thought of and uh, they're global available. So if your service scales and I, we have a example later on, then they're a good place to look at. Uh, the pain points is they are pretty expensive and it's not transparent in most of the cases how they actually measure the quality. So if you really want to have a, if you really want to send an SMS and you want to check whether it actually arrives, um, many times you won't find this feature or measurements in audio and video quality, etc. That uh, and if you once uh, decide to go with one of the leaders, um, the lock-in effect is even harder to avoid uh, compared to the rest of the CPaaS providers. So. Really here, depending on what you as a, from a consuming party perspective actually need, you, you basically are in that situation. And there's quite a lot of different providers and they provide different uh, things to you. So here, the dilemma again. It's the game, if you look at, into the topic from the consuming party, is that there are like a number of players versus what your developers are capable of actually consuming. And of course, there is a price question, you know, what would it cost to uh, implement a communication solution and then operate it. Here we have looking at looking at the market from the uh, telecommunications companies perspectives like the carrier then there is a huge market. It's uh, as Ellen states stated in the last years, a trillion dollar market, right? There are, I'd say hundreds of carriers around the globe and multiple of them in each region, country, you name it. There are just a few developers who are being able to uh, implement communication scenarios using zip and, you know, the, the old, fashion way of actually implementing it. And there is the dependencies to the OSS BSS stack. That's this, uh, the telco software stack. And that is actually established, I don't know, over the last 30 years and everyone is fighting with it. So it's not really made for uh, being a programmable stack for developers from the consuming party perspective. Uh, and then from the other from the other perspective, the other angle is of course the CPS market. That's pretty new, so it's much smaller in revenue. There are compared to the carrier world just a few player, so it's not hundreds but dozens. But there is a compared to the actually small, very small zip community, there is a a huge developed community, all the web developers, the app developers, you know, the usual suspect languages like uh, JavaScript and, and Ruby and Python and you name it. There are lots of, you know, developers. And um, that is actually quite a contradiction, right? So now if you are on consuming party perspective and you look at the picture, then you have a lot of carriers providing their stack let's say almost not uh, programmable. And then you have the new kids that actually just came to the picture a couple of years ago. It's a fast developer market. It's a couple of you know, dozens of, of players, depending on the region, but still uh, not just two or three. So the, the consuming parties, they are definitely in a situation that they have to now have to look into uh, quite a yeah, complex setting of different players providing different things. Whatever they decide, they have to decide for the one or the other. So there's no easy way to pick, you know, from 
the best SMS provider and then take another voice provider and take the easiest and cheapest video provider. You basically, if you want to develop something, you basically have to make a decision uh, with whom you go. From a programmability perspective, you'd always take the CPES leaders because they provide by far the best APIs, SDK, and value-added services uh, for uh, a huge developed community. You could actually uh, have your developers from, and then uh, if you look at it from a quality or price perspective, you'd actually go with uh, the carrier, but the carriers, on the other hand, would not provide their assets uh, in a nice way for the developers. So and um, so, you need to make up your mind. You need to look into the market. You need to have experience with what it takes to use CPaaS or Zip or both somehow. Um, and uh, whatever you do, you end up in a lock-in and a vendor lock-in situation. And uh, the next is is a very like uh, known uh, known problem is that. Of course, your requirements, the requirements, the requirements you might know today, they might change. When you scale, um, geography is changing. And if geography is changing, compliance then really is changing because there are different footprints or different regions have different compliance uh, requirements to communication. And then you might need performance um, indicators or monitoring or um, uh, other things that actually come with your requirements set. As a matter of fact, the consuming party is in a dilemma that there is you, you need to go with the vendor selection with the requirements you have today. That puts you in a situation at the end of the day that you're locked up with one of the vendors you decided for. And um, then, of course, um, your requirements might change. And, uh, but still, you're locked with the, the decisions you made. So that's, of course, uh, not very nice. It's actually good for the CPAS leaders because uh, most of the, uh, let's say, consuming parties would go at the beginning with those guys because they offer the, the best functionality. Uh, but in many cases, we will have an example later on. Um, this um, develops into a, quite a challenging situation when it comes to scaling or other things. Um, so that's the dilemma on the market, right? We have different players. And then I would like to introduce some ideas, that getting back to the simple terminology I introduced at the beginning. We actually see, you see the same picture, you know, with the different players, the raw material, the gold plating, and the fairy dust, and the consuming party. And the easiest way of making it easy, making more accessible uh, uh, to the consuming party is to enable the carriers to provide APIs for their raw material, right? It's uh, They have the trunks, they have the numbers and the SMS, and you just add on top of their existing technology stack another layer, and you enable them to provide their raw material and their assets via APIs and SDKs. That's actually not even difficult. There are a couple of providers of technology, uh, and uh, we actually quite like the open source guys uh, in that domain. Um, but you can choose from, let's say, a couple of providers. Uh, it's nothing else but an integration project. Yeah, you just look at the market and decide what's your best uh, pick, and then a carrier would be easily able to introduce CPaaS by just choosing one of those uh, software stacks and just use it. And then they have standard APIs and they can com compete at least with the basic CPaaS providers, right? That's, um, wait a second. Um, that's basically the a simple step, right? So here, try to get as many, so dear telco providers, <laughs> Go and enable your raw material uh, by using the usual suspects uh, enablement uh, software stacks, uh, preferable open source because it's better for everyone. And um, it's just good for you. And apart from it's good for the telco provider, 
um, the consuming parties, they gain too because they can choose their best region, for instance, because there are token providers everywhere. And in their regions, they know them, their market, and they provide the best quality and actually even the best prices, right? Because they can provide uh, quite good prices compared to at least the CPAS leaders. So this is the first step. It is very simple. We enable the telcos to actually be part of the CPAS game. Um, the next would be that, they, that we do what we call service aggregation. That would put the basic CPAS providers and the raw material providers in a position to actually compete even with the leaders in the CPAS market by adding value-added services as we had at the beginnings, like there could be like a modeling environment, there could be pre-implemented scenarios like two-factor authentication. We would basically just try to have step-by-step -step a situation in which the consuming party uh, has a better, uh, more comprehensive market perspective to be able to choose from not just the one, but to take different providers by making them looking very similar, let's say that way, that they provide at the end of the day, uh, pretty similar things. And that would take actually uh, the layer, what we call value added service layers, service aggregation, that uh, at least it would be like a number of providers and they would all provide similar things. So for instance, choosing one and then changing to another one later on because of price or geography or features would not be almost impossible, but actually pretty feasible. And uh, so looking at it from a consuming party perspective, of course, for the challengers, uh, the basic CPAS providers and the carriers, that would be good because they could even compete with the leaders um, that actually rule uh, the CPAS market. This is uh, what I mentioned. We This is one of many examples you could actually show, but we don't have the time here today to have uh, more than the one, but it's quite a actually prominent one. So the company Uber, they, when they started to become uh, a uh, yeah, taxi service, I would say, that's what the most thing they did at the beginning, they needed someone who were able to send SMS. It was in North America, United States, and um, they had a special requirement. They needed to make sure that the SMS was really sent fast and reliable and uh, they needed a, progr a programmable approach. So um, they approached Twilio, not just because San Francisco is the same place they live in, but actually uh, Twilio was at that time the only player who was able to actually fulfill their requirements. So they started using the SMS service of um, Twilio platform uh, in 2011. And um, as we all know, uh, Uber was actually quite successful, you know, scaling, on a global way, and uh, they realized uh, in 2017 that uh, they spent a hell of a lot of money on SMS. So each uh, person who would actually book a, a Uber cab would get an SMS as soon as the car gets close, and then you jump into the car, and as soon as you get close to your uh, target destination, you will get, you, get sitting in a car, you get another SMS, you know, prepare yourself, grab all your stuff. Well, you're getting close and it's going to be soon. The drive is over uh, soon. So there were like, uh, in just in each transaction, there were two SMS sent. And you could imagine if the SMS was late or not arriving, the whole service would be broken, right? So especially in the first SMS is very, very important that it says, you know, your driver is going to be here in a minute. So please uh, place yourself close to the street and wave your hand, stuff like that. And uh, so uh, in 2017, this way, by scaling successfully, they made 12% uh, 12 of Twilio's revenue. So that, that's quite significant, and Twilio makes a lot of revenue. And then Uber uh, uh, found out that they actually, they spent far too much money on, on the SMS. And uh, so what they did is actually found out that they pretty locked into Twilio, and it took them a lot of time and money 
to use other providers, in this case, Infobit, MessageBird, and BlackBerry. So they decided uh, the hard way to really uh, go for others too. So today they use like a, a portfolio of uh, SMS providers, uh, depending on price and geography, but they're all uh, programmable. So we think that's a good example where you see that there, you actually got a lock-in because you decide for the leader. Um, you stay for six years and in this case even make up 12% uh, of the leader's revenue, which is a lot. Uh, and then you go another time with a lot of money and time and risk actually for the service itself. You go and actually um, split up to, uh, in this case, four service providers to actually send you SMS. Um, and if you look into that scenario, so there are, there are, there are other scenarios already, so we we're actually late, uh, late enough in the market that we can see good other examples where actually scaling uh, services start looking into the situation. We think uh, in the pyramid I, uh, I, from, from our picture here, there is definitely space for universal API, and that's the layer that would be between the consuming party and all the players. So we would provide uh, what would be nice if there would be like a universal API in between the consuming party and all providers. And that would be for the consuming party extremely valuable because you could just uh, say, I need an SMS uh, that is cheap and I don't care whether it arrives. I need the best video quality in Asia or I need audio um, in four different countries and I choose by country and by destination um, for the calling feature, uh, the different the different and the best provider, et cetera, et cetera. So you could actually pick whatever you need and you could change any time because it's standardized, right? You use just the one universal API that provides you the usual suspects, endpoints, like capabilities, for calling, for video, for SMS, for on-net uh, messaging, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. it would uh, include the uh, push infrastructure for mobile applications and other things. Right? You could, uh, from a so from a consuming party perspective, like uh, this would be great. Of course, it would not be great for the C plus leaders because they invest a lot of money into being the most innovative provider of uh, programmable communication but for all the others the the follower the, the challengers and the telcos it would be great because it would enable them to be part of a market where at the moment only the cpas leaders have access to because uh, they would provide the best uh, but from the consuming party is the lock-in with uh, two or three cpas leaders is a uh, is uh, almost not acceptable uh, situation. So um, we see a lot of need for this, uh, let's say, liberalization of the, 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 the programmable communication market. And um, and that's why we work on that. So um, the what we've done so far is, uh, you can see here, I don't really want to go through the details. Just go to allnet.berlin and, um, and, and read yourself through. We, have a reference implementation for iOS and uh, a modeling environment based on open source, it's no great. And uh, we started uh, implementing Twimo, which is the Twilio markup language universal API. We're in the middle of doing this uh, to actually uh, enable carriers and basic CPS providers to provide, uh, let's say, Twilio's like services. So um, that's basically what is the state of what we do uh, at the moment. And uh, maybe to actually wrap up at the end, um, we see that actually uh, in, in Asia that uh, Idea Mart and uh, Alan has talked about Idea Mart in, in, in other sessions has proven the relevance, uh, in this case for Sri Lanka. And uh, not being an expert on the Asian market is it's, it's a huge continent, 
right? You might not go for a universal approach for all the countries at once. That could be done for North America and Europe, but uh, in, in Asia, it looks uh, not very feasible. So uh, there, there might be uh, better approaches to have uh, countries or let's say regional markets, uh, Southeast Asia, China, etc. Uh, that could be addressed um, different from the uh, the rest of the world and uh, that they introduce a uh, universal layer and for the consuming party we would actually suggest in Asia that you better look for your <laughs> CPAS friendly or enabled telco so dear CSPs uh, please go and use free and open source software to enable your stack as I explained it early on it's not a big deal to do so and uh, as soon as you do you actually can serve the consuming parties who would like to have access to in your region have access to programmable uh, communication and uh, from our experience it's better to go with the partners that uh, provide software and not hardware because that's the usual suspect in the OSS BSS sector like the telco sector they provide you with everything, uh, but in this case, you just should go for the uh, software providers that could actually set up a private or public cloud settings and configure everything in software. You don't spend that much money and time on setting up something. So don't go the uh, normal complex takeaway, but uh, go with the uh, flexible providers that actually do IT and not networks or telco stuff in the in the legacy way. Yeah, that's uh, basically what I wanted to express. Um, we have many years of experience to implement. Um, so from the consuming party perspective to implement uh, based on CPS providers and zip trunks from carriers. And uh, we at the same time now work for CPS providers to, uh, to uh, lift them up to a higher level to compete with uh, the uh, leaders on the market. So we have both perspective from uh, in the market from the uh, consuming party and uh, developing software for the uh, players on the market. And uh, we will later have uh, another session where we talk with the other guys in the same uh, slot here about the universal API ideas. So I'm looking forward to have the, the session and I, I hope I could make myself understood. Thanks a lot and uh, talk to you later in the other session. Bye-bye.